What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here on a special Saturday upload with the newest series on the channel discussing, and we'll be discussing um, other position groups for the Jaguars heading into 2019. We talked about the wide receivers last week with Mr. Why You Mad, and today we're talking running backs. And I have a very special guest on the channel, one of my favorites from one of my favorite podcasts. I got Jason from another Jags podcast. How you doing, bro? Doing good, dude. Been a fan of yours for a long time, man. Yeah, I've been a fan of yours also. I just, <laughs> I, I remember freaking uh, – you guys followed me on Twitter, and I, like, listened to your stuff, and it's, it's so generic. Like, you can tell that uh, you, Joey, and everybody that's been on the pod with you guys, like, you guys are genuinely, like, good friends, and you guys are fans, and it's a great podcast. You guys should give it a listen. It's terrific. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, we just we noticed there was like a niche for like actual fans and not people that just get paid to talk about the Jags. So we thought we'd try to exploit that. So that's what we do. <laughs> when you want to listen to somebody that actually cares about the Jags and its fans, you listen to another Jags podcast. Oh, yeah. When you don't care about anything, you listen to Tony Baselli, right? <laughs> well, there's a lot of guys down here that like didn't grow up Jags fans, but what's unique is that we're, we all grew up Jags fans. So, you know, it's pretty rare. You know, yeah, and that's that's why I, I enjoy the community so much because being from Idaho, you obviously aren't running into a lot of Jags fans from where I'm from. So I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad to have met, met these awesome people. Jason, one of those guys. So today we're talking about the running backs. And I guess before we kind of touch in, you know, discuss some things, ask some questions, kind of let's get your overall thoughts on the running back room heading into 2019. I mean, I think obviously it kind of just goes as Leonard Fournette goes. Um, he, there's some depth behind him, but really, I mean, if there's an injury to Fournette, you're stuck with pretty much nothing. So uh, hopefully he can play more than eight games like he did last season. But if he can play like he did in 2017, uh, 13 games, then I think we'll be okay because we have a little bit of depth there. But the biggest thing for me is going to be how John Filippo utilizes Leonard Fournette to me. So if Leonard Fournette, because from what we know Filippo does, you know, he likes the running backs that can catch out of the backfield. And it, it looks like Leonard Fournette is kind of developing that trait. You know, what do you, are you seeing that kind of develop in Leonard Fournette's game? Do you think that's going to be more of a factor this year in 2019? I, I think it definitely will be more of a factor because if we look at Nick Foles and what he likes to do, he likes to throw the ball. John Filippo likes to throw the ball. Um, how much – Marone and Coughlin kind of step in and kind of dictate how many pass to run ratio there is. I'd be surprised to see um, how that happens because I mean, the fact of the matter is, is Flippo got fired for not running the ball in Minnesota. So if Fournette can show he can do a little bit out of the backfield, I mean, if we look at our depth, there's not really a lot of receiving backs on our team. I mean, Thomas Rawls, I mean, are we going to call him a, I mean, maybe if he makes the team, I mean, there's not really a solid receiving back like uh, Darren Sproles was or, you know, even a guy like Dalvin Cook could do in Minnesota. So I hope so to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and uh, also another good thing about uh, the Another Jags podcast group of guys, they always, uh, they're doing position outlooks on their podcast as well. And they've been doing film breakdown. And I seen when I was about to do this with you, you guys were breaking down uh, Alfred Blue. Now, mm. Alfred Blue was a guy that in my position outlook, I like, I don't think that his, you know, his yards per carry, you know, is great. It's not, but he's very, very consistent. You know, let's kind of just talk about, in your opinion, what you're looking forward to with Alfred Blue this year. Do you think he makes a team? Do you think will make a difference? What do you think goes on? To be honest with you, I think Blue turns out to be a special teams guy. Um, he, like you said, he's consistent. I mean, he, he didn't, he doesn't get injured a lot. He plays a lot of games. His durability is one of the best things about him. And when you look at our history of running backs, durability is something that we definitely need. Um, 6'2", 225. I mean, that's a, that's a big guy. He's a one cut back. Um, he fits our zone blocking scheme pretty well. Um, I think he'll, he'll be okay. He might get uh, a couple carries here and there. Um, but he had that, I, we posted the video of the block punt he had against the Redskins, but, um, you know, something crazy is Alfred Blue had more yards last year than Leonard Fournette did. Isn't that crazy? Did he really? Was he, <laughs> yeah. was, he wasn't yeah. even every down back. Oh, I guess no. Lamar got yeah. hurt, didn't he? Yeah. Well, Fournette got hurt and Blue, you know, played. I think he had like 50 more yards than Fournette did last season. So it's just one of those things. I mean, it, it, the dude's hard to tackle. I mean, when he gets going downhill and he hits the gap, I mean, he, it takes a couple of guys to bring him down. So 
I'm excited to see him. He's always that. He's always that guy in fantasy that like is on the waiver wire, and you're exactly. like, don't fuck this guy up. I mean, he's, I don't know what he's gonna do. But uh, one thing I will say is he's never been a feature shotgun back. Um, he's always been in the eye, always been ace and single back. So I'm not really sure how he's gonna handle the shotgun load. Uh, I don't know if he's a if he's a Latavius Murray type back or if he can become that. Uh, honestly. The, the, the moral of the story of this running back group is that we have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, is Fordak going to be able to play in the shotgun? Is he going to be a receiving back? Is he going to be healthy? Like, it's kind of all up in the air. So I know past Jaguar team, so basically the last two years, the offense really relied on Leonard Fournette to make or break this whole entire offense, uh, mostly because we have Blake Bortles and he couldn't throw the ball down the field, you know, whether you're a supporter of that or not. But – um, how much does the offense's success this year ride on Leonard Fournette's success as opposed to the previous two years? Well, I know John Flippo said that the offense goes as Fournette goes, but to be honest with you, I think it's more about the offensive line. Um, I think what how they play is really going to dictate the entire offense. I mean, I'm really excited. I mean, Andrew Norwell is a great, great lineman, and he didn't give us much last year. I mean, he's excellent in his slide drops, his drops, uh, his bucket steps, his drop steps, all that. He's really good. I'd like to see him improve on his drive and lead step, though, a little bit um, as far as, like, his zone run blocker. But Jawan Taylor, man, I'm expecting him. Jawan Taylor is a great uh, play side lineman. Like, he is a good run blocker. I think the best run blocker in the draft. I wanted him in the first round. Like, that's how sold I was on him. And his drive step, his lead step is, like, amazing. And he's great to the play side. And Norwell's great on the back side. So I expect a lot of inside zone, outside zone to the right behind uh, Taylor and Norwell kind of scooping behind. And I think if they can get that going, that's – I mean, it doesn't matter what back's back there. You could have uh, Armstead back there, and I think he, you could play well because of this offensive line has potential to be one of the best in the league. And I think that's promising. I 100% agree with that, and I think that more of this offense is going to be how this offensive line goes, you know, because if we if we get a lot of injuries like we did in 2018, it's going to be hard for a lot of these running backs to kind of do what they do. And one guy we, we lost out on, TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant, who were both two good receiving backs out of the backfield, and it seems like they were contributing. Do you see any of these other running backs contributing the same way Yeldon and Grant did? Or do you think it's going to be kind of a step back as far as that depth goes? No, I think that I think that we did a good job of replacing those guys. I think Alfred Blue is your TJ Yeldon replacement. I mean, they're almost identical in size and almost identical in run style. The one cut back that hits the hole, and um, the guy's name is uh, oh Benny Cunningham. I think he replaces Corey Grant, and I think they're basically they did a good job of replacing those guys with cheaper guys and honestly have more experience and. Um, but like I had mentioned earlier, man, Ryquel Armstead is a guy that I'm really keeping my eye on because he – people don't realize, like, he's a, he's a really violent downhill runner, but he is probably the best pass-protecting back that we have. So I think in third-down situations, you'll see this guy coming on the field. And he's going to be a guy, I think, that at the end of the season isn't going to have, like, gaudy stats. But in your mind, you're going to be like, man, I saw that guy making a lot of plays. And you're going to remember him being more influential than his, like, stats end up being. I'm hoping Raquel Armstead can kind of be that dude because I'm on the same boat with you. I think that he has – he's done good things at Temple, obviously, and I think that the Jags did a good job with finding a running back that fits Leonard Fournette's playing style. So if Leonard Fournette were to go down, you got a guy like Raquel Armstead who is basically the same back. You know, downhill, has really shitty vision, you know, shit like yeah. that. So, yeah. um I'm really happy to see uh, what Raquel Armstead could do as well. Uh, what do you think his role is going to be in the offense? Do you think he's going to be more of a like a third down back, or do you think he's going to be kind of like a guy to come in on first and second downs for Leonard Fournette? I think he'll definitely be more of a third down back. Um, and I wouldn't even say his vision's shitty. I would say his biggest problem is that he hits the hole too quick, and so he isn't able to see where the holes are. You know, he gets the ball, and he relies on his speed. I mean, he had the second fastest 40 time in the draft. Yeah, I mean, the dude – he hits the hole super fast. He relies on his speed to get to the hole. And in a zone blocking scheme, you kind of have to be a little patient. But where he does excel, and I don't know if this answers your question, but I think you'll see him on like sweeps and buck sweep plays. So whenever he's in, I expect to see him, uh, the offensive line, moving laterally and then him taking sweeps. Because if you look back at his highlights at Temple, most of his big plays were on sweeps, So especially at a shotgun. So if that's something that we want to do, I think that this guy fits uh, DeFlippo's scheme almost to a T. So I'm like, I'm with you, man. I think, I think he's going to be great this year. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And a fun fact about him is he actually played a little D end 
at, oh, uh, really? at yeah at Temple, and he actually got a sack against Tulsa. So fun facts. That's why you got to follow another Jags podcast. That's right. That's Who right. else has these fun <laughs> facts for you? No one. No one's going through Temple yeah. to looking for Raquel Armstead. Yeah. Well, admit, admittedly, I'm a film nut. So I mean, I spend all day watching film and things like that. So what do you what do you usually watch in film on? How do you find all this film? I mean, I pay for pretty much everything. Oh, NFL rewinds, uh, the college football rewind, their version of it. Uh, I watch highlight films all day, breakdowns. I mean, it's just, I mean, I just love football. I've coached football for six years. I played football. I mean, I, I, I love the X's and O's of football as much as anybody. So um, that's what I really love about it. See, and that's, what the, I mean, I've been, I've been basically, I've been trying to hype up your podcast because I can't even, I love it. I love it, dude. I love listening to it. And that's why it, it's such a good dynamic with you and Joey because Joey's kind of like me. He's kind of like, he's kind of like a fan that yeah. really enjoys talking about the Jags and what yeah. he sees like from first glance. And then you got Jason, the analyst who knows <laughs> stats, everything that they do right, wrong and all that. So. Well, like you said, we, I, I grew up, we grew up together. We've known each other for a long time. So we get in there, we clown on each other and it, you know, we don't take it personally. So. <laughs> all right. Uh, what other running back? Questions? So Benny Cunningham, that's an interesting one as well. I think that he was a guy that I seen maybe contributing on special teams. I think he's, you know, he's quick, he's fast. And you got guys like DD Westbrook who's contributed contributed to special teams in the past but you probably don't want him playing as much on special teams because he's going to be you know one of our top guys in the wide receiver room um so what do you expect out of Benny Cunningham do you expect some special team stuff do you expect more just kind of like a Corey Grant in sometimes or not get a lot of playing time next year yeah honestly for me I think uh he's fighting with Rawls for a roster spot I mean I think both those guys could be kick returners but outside of that that's about it I mean they don't do much for me either one of those guys I mean I tried to watch a little bit of Cunningham I mean he was with the Rams last I think and and he I mean underwhelming in my opinion I mean I'm sure he's a great guy he's got to be a good football player to stay in the league for a little bit but as far as contributing to our offense and his skill level uh, I mean if he makes the team I'd be surprised so how many running backs do you think are going to be contributing this year do you think it's just going to be Fournette Armstead or do you think there's going to be a third guy like a blue or a Rawls or a Cunningham I think I think Fournette and Blue are your like um, every down backs. Obviously, Fournette's going to carry the major load. Blue will sp- spell them out. I think Armstead will come in on third down pass protection. Uh, Rockwell, Rockwell Armstead is pretty good on screen p- plays too, but outside of that, he didn't do a lot of uh, pass catching out of the backfield. So, uh, I, honestly, I think it's going to be Fournette and Blue. Those are going to be your two guys, and if they can stay healthy, I don't think you'll see much depth outside of those two guys. Um, if anyone else kind of steps in, I mean, there's guys like Williams on the roster, guys like that. But I mean, outside after those three, I think you're, you know, pick and kind of, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's it's crazy that you know I made a I made a video the other day talking about why the Jags front office is messing up, and I think they are with this whole Yannick and I saw that video. It's a good video. Yeah, thank like you. like all your videos. Hey hey, I appreciate that. Whatever happened to the videos of you picking games with your with your girlfriend? Whatever happened to those, man? That segment didn't last very long. <laughs> dude that's that's a mix that's a mix of two things yeah. one thing first of all is that my friends got pissed that they weren't on the channel mm. so they were like bailey yeah. doesn't know anything about football put us on those picks yeah. and then well. partially it was i'd come home from work and be like all right babe time to make this video and she'd be like i'm tired i want to watch the bachelorette you know yeah, like, yeah. so that never I mean- to be fair, I've been ripped into some Bachelorette recently. There's some good drama going on right now. So I really like the Bachelorette, <laughs> dude. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't see it last week, so don't spoil it. But uh, my boy Luke P. I'm I'm pulling for him, man. He's, I'm he's pulling for Luke P. Also, dude. That's, <laughs> that's my guy, dude. He's so crazy. He makes such good television, dude. He really does. See, this is this is why we needed this to happen. I didn't even need to stick on to the Jags. We need to talk about the Bachelorette and everything, but. Uh, let's, let's try and get back to, uh, Leonard Fournette. So what exactly is your expectations from Fournette this year? I don't want like, like a broad, like number per se, but I want to, I want to know, do you think that he's going to be a 2017 Fournette? Do you think he's going to be a 2018 Fournette? Do you think he's going to be a mixture of both? What are you expecting out of him? I expect him to be the 2017 Leonard Fournette. Again, I just can't get off of it. All comes down to the offensive line. I'm a big offensive line guy. Obviously, I never played a snap at offensive line in my life. That was my position, I, big dog. <laughs> but I but I, I am a firm believer in that you win the game in the trenches. 
And um, I think I think the offensive line stays healthy this year. I think Jawan Taylor is a big upgrade, and I'm expecting a 2017 Leonard Fournette even better. I mean, what do you get? 1040 yards in 2017. That's that's pretty good. I would expect a little above that. I mean, I'd like to see his yards per carry go up if he could hit into the fours. That would be good, but. I mean, we know who Leonard Fournette, man. He's a one-yard, two-yard, one-yard, and then just 80-yard. And then that's the 2017 Leonard Fournette. So I don't like to get caught up in yards per carry because I think that stat is can get really watered down with, like, fourth and ones, third and ones, goal line carries, things like that. So I don't like to get too caught up in that. But um, for me, basically, he was contributing, I think, a little over 103 yards per game in 2017 between receiving and rushing. I'd like to see that to about 115. Um, if he gets there, I think – uh, that that's what I'm expecting out of him. Uh, and if we do that, I think we'll experience a lot of success. So you're thinking, does Leonard get a hundred, a thousand rushing yards or a thousand all purpose yards? No, I definitely think he gets a thousand rushing yards. Um, yeah. I, I think he only, I mean, I think he averaged 23 yards per game in 2017 for receiving. Um, I'd like that number to maybe go a little bit more and I would expect it to, but given the offense, I mean, Nick Foles is going to want to throw the ball. I mean, there's no, doubt about it but at the end of the day when you look at the receiving room I expect a little upgrade from them just from Foles alone but they are what they are and when you're looking at guys like Ter- uh, Terrell Pryor and Chris Conley being on the field like every down and in four wides what can you really expect <laughs> out of Foles but <laughs> yeah. I mean we'll see I know this isn't a receiver receiver podcast but you know it is what it is Let's actually kind of talk about the receivers just real fast, I guess. Um, So you said Leonard Fournette's a 1,000-yard back this year, and I think so too. I think he gets maybe like 1,100 all-purpose. I think that's fair. But do you think we have a 1,000-yard receiver in the room right now? Mm, I don't. No. Don't either? No. I mean, maybe – I mean, who do you think gets the most? Didi Lee? Marquis Lee, I think. I think. I mean, it's all going to depend on his injury and coming back from injuries. I mean – a torn ACL usually takes about a full year of like, like after your recovery, or like a full year after like that of playing before you get back to who you are. Unless you're a freak like Adrian Peterson or something like that. Usually it takes you a good two years from the day you tear it to being back to your former self. So I love Marquise Lee, man. The guy's so clutch on third down, but I, I'm tempering my expectations on him this year. I'm thinking that we have a lot of guys that could get, 500 yards receiving I think that Nick Foles this is the argument you know people always make this argument that Nick Foles had all these targets in Philadelphia I don't know if the internet's making all these arguments but I know my friends are making these arguments you know when we talk about it but it's not like Nick Foles was throwing these guys bad balls you know what I mean yeah and I think that we have enough playmakers that do really well after the catch that Nick Foles is going to thrive spreading the ball around he's never really had to do that He's mm-hmm. had number one targets, like, where he's been, where he's been successful. Well, with the ex- yeah, where he's been successful. I was going to say, the exception of St. Louis, where his oh, number yeah. one receiver was Kenny Britt. Uh, he w- didn't do much while he was there, but <laughs> hopefully that's not what he's doing here. Oh, oh yeah, I, I remember. I watched the podcast. Yeah. You get fired up. <laughs> Joey goes, wait, we got Kenny Britt? <laughs> <laughs> Joey is what Joey is. Right? He's, he's great. Right. I, I told you, dude, yeah, you need to get him in contact with me because I, I need him I need him to put a I need to put him on he's here. He's got a lot going on. He's got a family. He he yeah. works a lot. So I mean we we have like one night a week where we do our show and that's about all we can get out of Joey. But well I yeah, that, uh, props to y'all for doing that because I know you guys are how old are you? Like twenty six, I'm gonna guess. Twenty nine. But 20. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's cool that you guys, you know, you guys are able to just do one video a week, you know, now that yeah. I finally have like one full-time job instead of two part-time jobs it's so fucking hard to do this yeah. five days a week man yeah absolutely <laughs> well we, you do you do a lot of like short videos which which yeah. great because people love short videos we just do a, a freaking hour-long video that people get tired of after like 10 minutes but eh, that's what we do you know it's kind of what we are yeah and it, it's the exact opposite with me because people are used to that short stuff and then yeah. you know i try bringing in this yee yee lifestyle podcast and no one watches it uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's it's tough out there, man. It's it's not easy. People don't understand what it's like trying to. Uh, but, but we're about to get uh, press credentials for uh, the Jags. We just are, got, are we, you really? Yeah, we've been emailing with their VP of uh, media, so um, we're excited for that. I mean, I'm a season ticket holder. I go to every single game. Um, but to be on the sidelines is going to be, or not for the games, obviously, but for practices. I'm pretty pretty pumped about that, dude. That's huge. You guys going to be? Is that breaking news on Tree Talks right here? 
Uh, we kind of been like, you've been hinting it. I knew you've been hinting it. Yeah. But yeah, we, yeah, we're, yeah. So look forward to that. Um, people, people, you know, like watching us chill on the couch and, <laughs> and kind of you're what we do. <laughs> <laughs> now you're there, dude. And that's, yeah. that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm very, and, and it's crazy too, because it's not like, I mean, you guys have been doing it for a while. You guys are at like 70 episodes. Yeah. We've been doing it for a little over a year. Yeah, and you guys are already at press credential level. You guys got partnered with Big Cat Country. Yeah. Big yep. Cat Country is not a big fan of Treep Talks. I don't know if they let you in on that one. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to like ruin anything, but I actually got blocked by Big Cat Country in like 2011 because one of their writers said that um, no one projected Matt Ryan as a top five pick, and I posted like four links of writers saying <laughs> that he was going to be a top five pick, and they just banned me instantly. I was like, well, okay, well, I was well, just. I was- my, my situation was a little different. So I've been kind of, I've been making YouTube videos since like, oh, eight, but like not all of them are on there, obviously. So in like 2011, I posted a video talking about how I fucking hated big cat country and how like pessimistic they were and all that. Yeah. And I didn't say pessimistic, right? I said pessimistic and, mm. I, and I, and I, and they just roasted me, mm. retweeted it, found my Twitter. And then like, I, I'd apply to, to write for their website and be like, can we just make this water under the bridge? And they would just ignore me. But you yeah. know, and I, I think the bridge has been mended now because I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, it, it was when I was like 12 years old. So, you know, that's just- and to be fair, like they've gotten better. Like yes. they, they used to like go into the comments and like tear people apart and, and they've gotten better, you know, and you know, I, I can't talk too much crap about them because they're, they're cutting us checks every month. Yeah. So I can't say too much, but, um, we also got picked up by uh, the overtime podcast network. So we're on two podcast networks now. So I fucking love to see my brother. Hey, meet you. hey. <laughs> you know, we're just, you know, doing what we do. You know, I just sit on Twitter and make fun of people. Like I throw some shade your way sometimes. I and mean, you're talking oh, about your favorite rappers. Awesome. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what is, what is your, who is your top five rappers right oh, now? Oh my God. So, right now or like all time. Right, right now. Oh, uh, I'm really digging J. Cole recently. Uh, I like I like a lot of J. Cole stuff. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't like any of this new stuff at all, to be honest with you. I think it's all crap, man. I like, I'm like, you know, old little Wayne, old Wiz Khalifa. I'm a big oh, yeah. fan. Tupac, I mean, those are my guys, man. Those are like 3-6 Mafia before they were all independent doing their own junk. I mean, I was, I'm, I'm an old school rap fan, so you know how it is. So when I saw your list of like 21 Savage and like, God knows who these people are now. The little pump, whoever you like, and then they Whoa. ended up <laughs> <laughs> the quick assumption with little pump. I didn't put a little pump on there. I actually freaking oh god. I saw a post Malone and 21 Savage in Kennewick, Washington, most random place. And trust, if you go to a 21 Savage concert, change your mind. Okay. It's great, dude. It's- I, I like that song a lot. I mean, mainly because J. Cole kills it, but I mean, it's, it's a good song. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't know what it is. I don't even hate J. Cole. It's just that, like, I feel like the internet's made me hate J. Cole. That's fair. I mean, the internet can do that. If you spend too much time on the internet, it can sway you. You got to be careful. Yeah. All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap this up. I mean, towards the end, it was a, it was a good bullshit. A rap, we're not, this isn't a rap video? <laughs> It's not a rap podcast or a bachelorette <laughs> podcast. <which> is- <laughs> this is going to be your least viewed video of all time. I hope you know that. <laughs> it's going to be 12 views for like a month. <laughs> hey, this has been fun, man. If you ever, if you ever, hey, hit me up anytime, man. You know, I'm always down. Hey, you, you know, you know, you got to put Treeb on another Jack's podcast. Hey, I will, man. Now that I've seen how you do these video things, I like it. I'm going to have to figure something out for sure. For sure. All righty, guys. If you guys haven't already, you guys can check the links down below. You can like me on Facebook at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Treep Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. And also, before you leave, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Helps me out a lot. We're 50 subscribers away from 1,000. We're getting nice. there. We're getting nice. there. Go plug your shit. Go right ahead, Jason. Uh, we're another Jags podcast. We are what we are. If you like to look at, listen to some guys just rant about Jags and hate on each other, just Google another Jags podcast. You know, you want to plug your own Twitter? Yeah, my Twitter is, uh, I mean, I don't even know my handle anymore. Uh, it's jtrent904. Yeah, you can follow it. It's and The links will be down below. <laughs> I'm here for you, Tree, man. I'm not here for me. I'm here for you, man. <laughs> hey, I appreciate I like your that. stuff. I like your stuff. I appreciate that a lot. All righty, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.